Hey, Cole, I wanted to ask you a little about your increasing responsibility of playing on the penalty kill a little bit. I guess, first of all, just how has that been for you to take on those minutes? Yeah, it's been uh, good to kind of earn, earn that side of trust as well. I've played uh, played the penalty kill um, in junior, so it's it's good to kind of get my feet wet in, in that area and, and learn from uh, you know, guys like Curls and Robbie, Gus, Booner, all the guys that have played the kill this year. Um, they've been uh, really great with just helping me out um, with, with certain little tips. You mentioned earning trust. How do you feel like you've been able to earn that trust? I think it just you know, comes from uh, you know, playing in the middle of the ice and, and just kind of being responsible in, in my own zone and uh, kind of just um, you know, always competing and, and trying to, I mean, do, do the right thing on both sides of the puck. I know we say it to you a lot, but you are the youngest player in the league. Do you have a sense of how, I guess, uncommon it is to be taking on this responsibility at this stage of your career? Uh, I mean, that's not really something uh, I'm worried about, not really about uh, my age. I just want to do uh, anything I can to, to help our team um, win games. So whether that's um, playing the power player on the penalty kill or just playing really hard five on five, I'm willing to do anything. Lars said he had a conversation with you about this responsibility. Can you share, I guess, just sort of how that conversation went and what you all talked about? Yeah, we just kind of you know, talked about um, what my goals are. And obviously, I want to be uh, uh, an all-around player and, and be uh, you know, elite in all aspects um, um, all, all over the ice. So, um, And to do that, um, being, being um, responsibly defensively and, and, I mean, playing the penalty kill is one of the things you have to do. So um, he kind of just asked me if I'm up for that. And, yeah, obviously, it's something I, I want to, I mean, do going forward as well. So um, that's kind of just how, how it went. And... Um, from there, I just started the teaching, and then uh, um, lucky enough to have have some opportunity in games to, I mean, show that I can play the penalty kill. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Brian Hedger. Go ahead, Brian. Hey, Cole. Uh, about six months ago or so, you weren't a Blue Jacket yet. Uh, I think you're going into your, you know, obviously the biggest night of your career at that point, draft night. What were you doing on draft night as far I mean, I know you were at your house. How closely were you paying attention to the to Seth J, uh, Jones trade rumors and stuff? Honestly, yeah, on draft day, um, I had a couple of my buddies from Medicine Hat come in. And, I mean, just my buddies from Regina and my past teammates and, um, and obviously my family and uh, my trainers and, and just kind of everyone that was close to me. Um, we were just kind of hanging out. Um, like you said, just at my, at my house during the day and, and uh, kind of just get, help me get my mind off of things. And then, uh, yeah, so I wasn't really on my phone or, or paying attention to, to much things that were, were happening on, the, on kind of the business side, right? So when I did see the draft board and I saw that um, Columbus had that pick and made the trade, I was, I was a little bit um, kind of shocked in a way because um, I know that was originally supposed to be Chicago's pick. So, I mean, yeah, what did you think of the Seth, Seth Jones trade as soon as you saw it? Were you like, wow, like one of those, like, like everyone else in hockey? Or? Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously he's a really great defenseman and uh, um, re really valuable player to Columbus. So anytime um, a guy like that leads an organization, it's, it's, it's going to be news uh, or it's going to be news in the, in the hockey world, right? So, um, yeah, a little bit shocked, but, I mean, uh, in return I thought, um, we, I mean, grow, uh, growing up, even when I was, maybe, you know, Bo and Beaner, just a couple years older than me, um, I remember watching them in the World Juniors and stuff like that, and remember thinking that um, they're, they're really great players. So um, it was cool to, to when I got to come to camp and, and get to know them a little bit, and now here they are. They're my, my teammates and close, closest buddies. Yeah, I was going to say that you kind of walked right into what I was going to ask you next was, you know, in the past six months or something, all three of you guys are here already. Uh, in the NHL, making your ways, you know, that kind of way. And there's also another pick to come next year or 23, depending on how that goes. Um, can you – are you able to look around and kind of see, you know, what, what they're trying to build here for the future when you look at, you know, that night and some other young guys here? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, we're, the, we're the youngest team in the NHL right now, and um, we have a lot of really good prospects. And um, obviously with Lars being his first year as a coach, it's, it's an exciting future for sure. And uh, I mean, even now, it's, 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 it's already exciting. I mean, the things that I, mean, I think we've, we've proven what we could do in this league if we uh, kind of all buy and work together. So it's exciting that way. And um, kind of just our atmosphere and culture as a young guy, it's good to kind of learn that right away. And um, for when uh, the, the, these, like you said, these next draft picks come in or some of our other prospects it's um it's gonna be cool to can i mean maybe try to teach them on um, the ways and i mean just kind of you know build that kind of um 
no atmosphere into them, and uh, yeah, it's going to be exciting um, from here on in. Yeah. Last one I got for you is uh, um, when you look at uh, the the draft last year, it, it, the trade happens. I know you were projected, I believe, around twelve or eleven. Did you have a feeling that Columbus was going to target you with that pick? And did you did your brother say something like, you know, you're going to be a Blue Jacket or something like that? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I mean, actually, when uh, like a week before the draft, week ten days before the draft, um, the NHL send sent or sent me, and I mean all the other uh, prospects. I think that were projected in the top. I mean, two rounds. They got all 32 hats. And uh, just as a joke, I put the Columbus one on. I mean, that would have been on like July 17th. So, I mean, a week before the draft and my brother's like, yep, you're going to Columbus. I like that hat. Keep that hat on and put the hat in the front. So when, you get, when Columbus picks you, it'll be easy to grab. So, yeah, he always joked about it. Um, and, yeah, I mean, here I am, a little bit of um, kind of deja vu. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Cole. Thank you. Hey, Cole, uh, we're lucky right now on that we've got a, a kind of a regular stretch of somewhat normal, right? You got practice game, practice game. How much, how much is getting back to at least a little bit of a routine helpful to you right now? Yeah, it's very helpful. And I mean, where we still got you no know, really great crowds here at home, so that helps as well. It's you know kind of getting our minds off of of the outside world and what's happening, um, um, COVID-wise, all over the place. So um, it's nice to for sure be back in the routine, and uh, you know we can take advantage of that and uh, get better as a group and uh, be really excited when it's time to play. You know, I think right about the time of the the shutdown, people were starting to ask you questions about the grind of the season and that type of thing. In some odd way, was was that a bit of a silver lining for you, Cole? A chance to catch your breath, almost, and then kind of get back at it to where to where we are right now. Yeah, I mean, uh, a chance for myself, but I mean, I think it was a chance for a group just to kind of you no know, step away and get our mind off the game a little bit and um, enjoy their families and and friends or whoever they were spending it with, and then just kind of coming back and and being ready and being recharged. I think uh, um, that that helped a lot of us. And finally, uh, I know Bailey was asking you a little bit about responsibility, late game responsibilities. You were out there six on five the other night. How much just do you relish that, the chance to shut things down, the chance to, to, finish, a, uh, to finish a victory? Yeah, that's, uh, no, obviously never take that for granted. I mean, um, I, when I'm sitting on the bench, I'm, I'm ready for whenever um, Lars calls, calls my name to, to go out there. So um, when he called, called my name to go out there, I mean, obviously there's a lot of responsibility. And, I mean, like I said earlier, I want to do anything it, uh, it takes to, to help, help our team win. So I was glad that I was put in that situation and, and glad that um, we got back on the right track with a huge win there. Thanks, Cole. Thank you. All right. Looks like that's all the questions we have. Thanks, Cole. Thank you, guys.